But uh, I want to uh, do this. Uh, Pete Buttigieg is um, in the lead in Iowa now. Uh, people have noted his 300, or I should say 180 degree turn on Medicare for all. They see that as indicative of his complete lack of commitment to really anything other than winning. People have uh, pointed out that he presented a Douglas plan, claimed to have all sorts of support from black leaders. And it turns out that the way that they established that support was to send an email out and said, we put your name on this report. If you don't want it there, respond within hours and we'll take it off. When you have to opt out of endorsements. That's that. That's so interesting. Good, I like that system. Then on top of that, to present the Douglas plan, they, they took a stock image of a photo of a woman and a boy that are in Kenya. Now, my understanding is that this plan has to do with the United States <laughs> for black people in America, but it's so hard to find representations of black people in America that Kenya is sometimes the best place to look. But Julian Castro, who will not be on the debate stage in, on Wednesday night, has taken it upon himself to basically ring the clarion call. And I know that at least one other candidate who has dropped out of the race, I just by fluke had a chance to talk to that person. They, they are all very skeptical of Pete Buttigieg. They disagree with, you know, some of them disagree with Bernie Sanders, disagree with Elizabeth Warren. It's not about disagreement with Pete Buttigieg. It's about this guy has no core beliefs. He doesn't believe a thing. And uh, here's Julian Castro making the argument. Now, understand, well, we'll talk about this in a moment. I believe uh, Mayor Buttigieg has a real problem with black voters because of his track record as mayor of South Bend. Uh, it's a bad track record with black voters. That was reflected in the policies that he put in place, in uh, the relationship with the community there in South Bend. My concern is, are we really going to risk putting somebody at the top of the ticket who is not going to excite a big part of our base. To me, that's playing into Donald Trump's hands in 2020 because he won in 2016 based on the turnout of African Americans falling, particularly when it comes to communities like Milwaukee, Detroit, Philadelphia that are in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. If you can't excite people, and speak to the African-American voter in a genuine way that's based on a track record. And it's too risky to be at the top of the ticket because we're risking another loss. And so um, my hope is that in the next 10 weeks that, uh, you know, we're going to see some changes. I, I share that hope. Yeah. Um, it's even worse. I just read that at least two of the people that Buttigieg said endorsed him actually endorsed Bernie Sanders. I mean, there was a lot of confusion with well, that list. That's yeah. because they didn't opt out of the endorsement process quick enough. You got you got to be responsible. If you get that email, if you get that bulk email, you got to opt out of the endorsement. It would be great if we did the voting that way too. If you don't opt out of voting for Pete Buttigieg, he wins. Um, the the one thing to to keep in mind is that even if you think Pete Buttigieg is going to lose. Um, his doing well in Iowa and New Hampshire, in some respects, helps, if you can believe it, Biden. Because the important thing for Joe Biden is to not be seen as a big loser in New Hampshire and Iowa. He's probably not going to win. He just doesn't want to be seen as such a big of a loser in those two states that it begins to undercut the foundations of his support in South Carolina, which are largely based on this perception that he's electable. If you have Buttigieg coming in first or second, 
If he comes in third, eh, maybe it looks makes Biden look a little worse. But if he flattens basically the drop off between the winner and the loser, it's going to help uh, Joe Biden, at least the perception that he's not the big loser from that uh, thing. But we'll see. Um, it's surprising to me that the uh, Pete isn't able to get black support with the Pete Buttigieg dance. Yeah, here's the uh, Pete Buttigieg dance, the Iowa dancers. Turn the music down because we don't want to get sued by Fall right. Boy, but look at that. Yeah. Can we turn that down even more, yeah. the music? Yeah, I just get it. Uh, you don't really need the music, actually. There you go. You kind of it's probably that. better it's without it. Terrifying. Yep. What is it with the dancing? It's it's t- fun. That's how you get to 20% in Iowa. There you go. Exactly. You got to dance. They're showing their grassroots energy. They love corny dances in the Midwest. Hey, speaking of people.